Good afternoon everybody and uh, welcome to the daily Thy Kingdom Come prayers that we're going to be having at two o'clock every afternoon. If you'd like to make a comment then please do so. Um, that would be nice to know if uh, if people are wanting us to pray for particular situations um, or particular people at this time. And it would be really good to just gather together if you can, maybe daily or uh, as, as, as much as possible this week so we can have a sense of our prayers coming together. Um, it's the week of... Uh, it's the, the period of Thy Kingdom Come, but it's also Mental Health Awareness Month in May. And so we are going to be um, uh, focusing on Thy Kingdom Come, but also with Mental Health Awareness, so which is a real problem at the moment. And so I'd like to um, just invite you just to reflect with me some Bible passages or a Bible passage each morning, each afternoon and then some reflection and then some prayers to go with it so welcome everybody and i hope you find this an enriching time um, as we come together in prayer so let's just come together in prayer before we hear our bible reading for today gracious and loving god we thank you that uh, this day this week we can focus on your people and praying for thy kingdom come thy will be done and so as we bring to mind people and situations that we will recall each day we ask that you would bless them and us as we bring them to you amen and so uh I want just to have a reading now from John. The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. Today I want to just consider and just think about um, living in isolation, which for people with mental health issues can be a, a massive problem. And self-isolation has been really talked about over the last few weeks and months, particularly with coronavirus. Um, and even for those people who like solitude, it, it may have been a little bit too much. Our solitude has, has been too much. But for others, the thought of being cut off from people can be soul-destroying. We are people, you know, as humans, we live together. It's not often that we can live alone and feel happy in that, in that situation. But as the coronavirus has developed through Lent, it's interesting, isn't it? It's developed through Lent. Um, it is a timely recall to remember the times when Jesus was isolated. And Jesus was isolated many times during Lent. When he was in 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Even though he was surrounded by his disciples, he felt alone. And then during that time when he walked to the cross and was vulnerable, he was isolated. And it's easy for us to say as Christians... Well, you're not alone. God is with you. God never leaves you. And sometimes that can be a bit trite. But actually, as people, we thrive off human contact. Whether that is socially, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, it, it, we thrive off it. And Jesus also thrived off company. Jesus thrived off just being surrounded by his disciples and the people who loved him. But isolation is not just about physical isolation. It's not about how many people are in the house or how many people are in the room. It's to do with who we are. It's to do about our heart and our souls. Are we isolated from God? 
Do we feel abandoned by God? Do we feel that God is absent? And this sometimes is a real challenge. It's not about living in isolation. It's about living in communion with God. And therefore, we're never going to be alone. It can be sometimes difficult to recognise that at the moment where we're not meeting as a church family. When we're living in isolation in our own homes. And yet we are connected to God. And through God, we are connected to each other. I think the most difficult thing about self-isolation, yes, it's about the physical, about being isolated from people, from family and friends, which then also feeds into our emotions. It feeds in then to getting depressed, um, being anxious. But I think actually it's what I'm really concerned about is people's spiritual isolation. That together they're not being able to maintain that spiritual focus in their faith. And so like many churches here at Fleet and Beacon Hill, we're looking at doing online worship and prayers and nurture groups to try and bring that together. Having coffee, we had a virtual coffee this morning uh, for people who hadn't gathered and that was lovely. That was really good to see and to experience. But actually, I think the challenge for us all is about how do we offer that to God? We might know people who are suffering within themselves physically. They're being isolated. They're being depressed and anxious. But also it's affecting their faith. It may be that doubt is creeping in. It may be that they're just abandoning God because they can't feel God's presence with them. And so each day we're going to be thinking about people and situations. And I'd like you to pray for five people um, each day. It could be the same people each day that you want to bring before God, but five people that you would want to name in your heart or name here. You can make a comment if you wish and we can pray for them. About people who are feeling isolated spiritually, not just physically or emotionally, but spiritually. And it's at this time when when barriers are broken down. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. It doesn't matter if you're a person of faith or whether you're searching or person who have no faith. People who have no faith actually have a spirituality, a deep spirituality. And so God knows our situations, but it's we have this time and opportunity that we can just offer that before God. And so I'd like us just now just to pause and to consider and to think about the people that we are going to name now in our hearts or you can make a comment if you wish before God. And so we're just going to have a moment of stillness as we just bring those five people, just five people before God who are experiencing maybe anxiety about being isolated. And so let's just pray together. Loving Lord, you bring your people together, all together, through thy kingdom come. Where there are no barriers of denominations, where we pray for people that we know and that we are concerned about through this month of mental health awareness in May. And we name before you in our hearts the people that we would want you to bless and to encourage and we hold them before you now, Lord. And in our silence, we ask that you would bless them. Lord, we pray that you would give us that commitment to carry on praying for your kingdom, to carry on praying for your people. And may this short act of daily worship that we will have until Pentecost, we ask that you would bless it and bless all the people who partake in it each day.
And so we ask these prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us just to, to read together um, that verse from John again, and I'm going to read you a poem in a moment. So the verse from John that we heard right at the beginning is, The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me and I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. I don't know what your thoughts are about being alone or isolated. I know that Helen's watching. Hello, Helen and Vicky. Hello, Vicky. Um, and maybe you can just recall some people and some some situations that we just offer before before God now. And then I'm going to finish with a little story. And I've got the wrong book out. Hold on. Typical. Where is it? Oh, here we are. Okay, I'm going to just read you a little story to finish with. We've got five minutes before I finish. And this one's about Alan's half hour. Alan can't see for the life of him why God has still has him in this organisation. It's the chill place, this big bank, and he's been thinking about leaving for a while. He's been brought into a team that's been led by much younger men who's destined for great things. And Alan is a lot older than them. There are 130 in the team. It's a big place. When he arrives, the boss tells him, your workspace isn't quite ready. You need to get things organised. I'll take you to my number two. Great, he says. I'd like to meet the other people that I'm going to work with. But you mustn't talk to them. They have work to do, just like you have. OK, he says. I'll try. But he was a bit tetchy and his voice had a lot of frustration in it. As he was walking to the number two boss, he looked around and thought, what kind of culture is this? What kind of company am I working for? The next thing he sees is a man at a desk with a computer working. He isn't talking to anybody. He's just doing his job. Alan looks at him and thinks, am I going to be like that in a few weeks' time? All I'm focused on is the computer and not people? He thought about this and thought, does God want me to sit in front of a computer all day and not communicate with people? Now, as it turned out, Alan was very good on the computer and he'd done this with every team he'd been in. And he knew about restructuring and he knew that people were more important than computers. At the end of the day, when he went to see his boss, the boss said, it's a wonderful business I've got here, this bank, a £185 million profit. And then Alan turned to him and had the courage to say, yes, it is a very, very successful business, but it's so isolating. People don't talk to one another. People are not aware when somebody's not there at their desk. People are focused just on a screen. And thank you very much, but I don't think I'm going to work here anymore. I think, actually, I'm going to be more involved in community. As he left the building, the boss looked at Alan and looked at his whole surroundings and realised that maybe 
Alan had got it right, that people are more important than objects. Well, until we meet tomorrow, friends, I hope that you have a good day today and a good morning tomorrow. And uh, thank you for joining me this afternoon and we'll meet tomorrow. God bless. Bye.